where their mouth was, and they did the work constantly. And Chris is like, without a doubt, one of the best people in the game right now. And yeah. it's just all what he did for himself, you know? And you, it's easy to, to do that now because Chris posts videos of himself drawing. And you can go watch him online and see how he's doing what he's doing, or, or any of your favorite artists. There's a chance there's a video or a, a blog post breaking down their process. Yeah, yeah. I'm mostly self-taught. That uh, I mean, other than I went to a community college for like a semester, took art classes because I didn't want to pay my actual students. But uh, uh, yeah, and it was mostly just I would go to like digital webbing and pencil jack and Dave uh, McKegg's forum when those like were more active places, and I would you know learn as much as I could and. I would, you know, again, it's competition, but it's competition with people posting stuff online. Um, and you just gotta like keep learning. Like there are people who would post at the time who were way better than me, who are still about at the same level they were then, that I'll see occasionally. And you know, I'm here. Yeah. And it's like, it's not that I was more talented than them, I just learned better than they did. I think it's also what you think of it. I think yeah. a lot of that is like, you open up the doors for people, or like being in the position where you're on this forum, where I've seen the gutters on before, and um, there are a lot of big guys now there who started there, you know? Yeah. And it's interesting because like, it's really only what you make of it. There was this really great colorist at Boom, and recently I found out he was still at Boom, and it just broke my heart. I was like, he started like way before I did, and when I was at Boom, I was in competition with him in my brain. And of course that made me try to be better, and then I'm no longer at Boom, but he's still there. And I was like, why is he still there? He's so much- Shots fired at Boom. No. <laughs> 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 saying, like, he, he, deserves, he deserves a higher page rate, he sure. deserves ownership, sure, sure, sure. he deserves a lot of the things that he can get on these other projects elsewhere. And I mean, maybe he's happy there, but it just it did break my heart a little bit. But it is of what you make of the opportunities, you know? So you sound like you took every opportunity, and that's maybe why you're doing things that they're not doing now. Yeah. Chris, you've been working at Boom for like four years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with Boom. Nothing wrong with Boom. <laughs> Welcome back great. now. I, gen I genuinely mean they that. They are like, wonderful there's, people. Yeah, there's, there's stepping stones and everything, but they are aware that, you know, they are a stepping stone. So if anyone ever got their start, there's a bird. 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 <laughs> He's definitely gonna I die. Know, it's and, it's 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 and then the panel is looking at the bird. Um, but no, there's nothing wrong with Boom. It's a good stepping stone, but I think it's important just to, like, I think it was uh, Kelly Sue and Matt Fraction who I first heard them use the phrase of, like, what's your five year plan? And when I first started comics, I was 22, like, five year plan? I don't know. Yeah. But now it's like every other day, I'm like, what's my five year plan? Yeah. And I think, like, if your five year plan, if you get that awesome first gig at Boom doing whatever you're doing, like, that's awesome, work on it, be your best self, because like Ricky's gonna pick up that book or she's gonna look at it on TA, you never know. So color the best you've ever colored or draw the best you've ever drawn. Draw and color for what you want. But like make sure in your head you're saying, where am I gonna be in five years? Yeah. Because it should not be the same place you start, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. You should absolutely have goals. Like, and concrete goals. And don't put them like high in the sky, I'm gonna be drawing Batman in five years. Yeah. Like, That's... get yourself on a track where you know you're gonna be picking up skills and talent and building your portfolio to a place where you can achieve those goals. You know, figure out where you wanna be in a year, figure out where you wanna be in five years, figure out where you wanna be in three months, and then start doing those things that are gonna get you there. It's really, really unlikely that you're going to be working at Marvel unless you come from being wildly successful in other media without having worked at like MyDW and like, you know, building up through the lower tier publishers to, to the point where you're working and you can get the, you know, higher profile gigs. Um, it should go without saying, too, for artists, put sequentials up. Oh yes, don't, don't, yes, don't just, just draw covers, yeah. draw pages, find a spec script somewhere and draw it. It's good practice for you and it is the only way editors know that you can tell a story through art. I can't look at a cover and go, yeah, this guy could draw like a 10 page story for me. I can only see that if you have sequentials in your portfolio and you're constantly doing them and constantly yeah. pushing yourself to interpret that script in new and interesting ways. And make them easy to find on your site. Yes. If you have to, tag them all sequentials and then put a page that links only to those yep. right there where it says it right at the top. Yeah. Make it easy for me. Make it easy for my other editors to be able to find this stuff for you. Because we don't have that much time to hunt down new talent, but that's part of our job, a big part of our job. It's my favorite part of the job. Um, so if I'm at your site and I can't navigate it or if I can't find your sequential pages, then I'm going to get really frustrated and I'm going to go someplace else. And there are a lot of people who want these jobs, so make it easy for me to find your work. And it doesn't, it doesn't stop when you, you're breaking in either. I open up this chat with uh, uh, Andrew Hennessy, who's an inker, and uh, we're always saying, 
you know, it's, it's still our job to make the editor's job easier. That, that's our job. We, we, we're not there to, to make it. <laughs> we're not there to make it harder because they have like ten thousand jobs to do. So the easiest we can make it with them, we're being less of a butthole. Yeah. Let's bring it back around again. Yeah. I'm gonna open this up to questions here in a second. Uh, there's a mic right here in the middle. If you guys have any questions at all, this is your chance to come to come on. You can just line up in front of the mic. We'll start so you can, you can get in line. But I wanted to I wanted to go back to Christina real quick. You you said you you got your master's degree. Mm -hmm. Did that play into what you have like your career in comics? So uh, I would say short answer is, is no. You don't need to have a master's degree to edit or write comic books. I went to uh, I went to to get my master's because. I wanted to learn how to write better. I wasn't done figuring that out. I, was, I still wanted to do that. But it was at Sarah Lawrence, where I was getting my master's, that I fell in love with editing. I didn't know that's what I wanted to do. And I didn't know, I loved comics, I've loved comics my entire life. Um, up until that point, and I was like in like my mid-twenties, where I was like, oh, a comic editor, that's a thing? I did oh, that's great. Movie. It's like, these are yeah. jobs. Yeah. You can do that? Oh my god, I'm gonna do that. Um, and it's it was, Oh my god, it's a beautiful aha moment. Um, I felt kind of dumb afterwards. I was like, I should have figured this out much earlier. I'm like 25. Um, but it was from there that I, uh, I got the internship somehow at Marvel, which was awesome. But I was doing other editorial work. I was the managing editor for uh, the literary journal on campus at Sarah Lawrence. Uh, and I was doing editorial work on the side. And I was building my editorial portfolio. And I didn't stop doing that once my internship at Marvel ended. And we didn't go, oh, I didn't get the job at Marvel right out of the internship. I might as well do something else. I kept looking for editorial jobs. And so I got an editorial job at an art book publisher. And it wasn't like what I wanted to really be doing. I really wanted to be at Marvel. But I knew that I could develop my editorial skills. And like all of editorial is an apprenticeship program, really. You start at the bottom. And our internship program at Marvel is the first step. If we can see that you can do this in the internship, we're going to hire you later. And then the assistant is the next step, and you just learn more and more from people who have been doing this much longer than you have. You develop your skills, you take on more things, and you just, you climb the ladder. And that's what editorial is, really. Yeah. Yeah. And now um, I run the internship program at Marvel. Really? Yep. Aww. So uh, it, applications are opening up. If you're, uh, I'm going to plug it really fast. Oh my gosh. Uh, so if you're enrolled and you can be in New York for the fall semester, please start looking at the Marvel.com site. Our internship applications are going to start opening up for the fall semester in the next couple of weeks. I want to hear from you. Please apply. <laughs> and then it's good to be in the Marvel internship because I, I think another thing is it's good for an internship. With me. And it's a great internship program, and I don't just say that because I run it and also I was in it. It's very good. We make you do editor jobs, <laughs> things that I don't have time for, you do, because I don't have all that much time, so. But it's yeah. not just that, like, you, when you actually are in the office and you see how a business works, yeah. you realize that there are roles at the company that you don't know <laughs> someone performs. And so while you're there, you may say, oh, I can work in the, the production group and, and do corrections at the last minute or resize pages, or I could be in the manufacturing group and be in contact with the printer and talk about paper stock and that kind of thing, or I could be in legal or in the accounting group. There are lots of different internships at the at the company, but they're also stepping stones. Guys like Dan Slott were the, yes. the word intern. Uh, yeah. Uh, twice, uh, right? Uh, twice. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I was actually just gonna say, Dave Stewart started as a design intern at Dark Horse, and so now the guy has like nine or ten color recognizers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he just started as a design intern. It's amazing, and that's how he got his first gig. I think he just was like told, "Hey, can you, like, can you just do some colors?" And he's sure. Like, sure. And then he found his life's work. Right. Like, yeah. It's incredible. So when you walk in, you don't know. Bit, like, if you look at the credits on a comic page, you can see the seven or eight people who worked on that individual issue, but there are literally hundreds of other people at the company who do all kinds of jobs. So the internships are invaluable because it could open a door to something that you don't realize exists. Um, I would also just, to backtrack for a second, because we talked a bunch about uh, art and going to art school, um, and I'm the only person who just writes up here. Um, so I just want to say for writers, like, uh, I think a lot of comics writers don't have any formal writing training or don't have degrees in that, but, but the thing about, and maybe everyone here will disagree with me, but the thing about breaking in as a writer is that you sort of have to understand is that getting work as a writer in comics when you start is harder than getting work as an artist, but then it switches once you have work. That being an artist in comics is much harder than being a writer, but editors can't take the time to read your spec script. They can't take, I mean, they legally can't read your spec script, but they can't take the time to just like 
read scripts, you have to make comics, and artists, that takes artists a lot more time, which means you have to save up money and pay artists to make your comics. You have to get the comic out there. Like, there's a lot more steps. Like, a lot of artists can go and be like, I drew this, and go up to Ricky at Portfolio Review tomorrow, and he'll be like, that's really cool, do you want to draw Wolverine? And, like, they'll be drawing Wolverine in a year. No one can go up to Ricky and be like, I wrote this. And he'll be like, that's really cool, short story. Like, that just doesn't happen. That's not the process. Yeah. So, like, figure out writing, but you have to figure out how to make a comic more completely. Can I just very quickly, uh, do I have time, Ricky, just to add to oh, that? Yeah. Okay, just because, like, what you said is awesome. I'm really glad to hear that you're talking about and telling people to save money and do these things. Like, as somebody who's starting to write, and then Declan, of course, like, we have our studio and we're always training people, trying to, like, tell them, like, really good business etiquette. And I just want to say, I'm not on Twitter anymore, but I've been on Twitter for a while and I'm a blogger. As, an, as a writer and a new writer, you are basically also a project manager because you become your editor. You yes. also are hopefully paying people decent enough rates all these different things, but I just want to tell you one important thing that I know it's hard when you're a writer. Now that I've been on the other side, you get really eager. You want to see your stuff now. You want to like, you want to call up that guy and be like, oh, I know he's just on Twitter playing video games or whatever, but <laughs> you need to keep your cool because they are going to remember you well, if you lose your stuff and you become a jerk. Because I do, and I don't think writers are entitled. I don't, I sometimes, yeah, but anybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's like a certain level of eagerness as a writer because you, you, like he says, you can't sell yourself until you are putting something out there. So if artists or color or letterers are moving really slowly. It's really hard to just, you know, feel like you're getting anywhere. You feel like you're just spinning out, probably. But you have to, you have to find that fine line between being an impatient jerk, especially publicly, versus being patient and emailing people saying this is important. Like, if I could also give maybe one advice, maybe Matt would disagree. Don't pay in advance. That's obviously really hard. If you, yeah. Don't if you give an artist like 20 pages to do, and then you're like, I'll pay you in advance. I'm going to help you out. You didn't help them out. You just ruined your chances of ever seeing your art ever come in. So be nice online about your artists. It's like, seriously, there have been so many things in the media lately, like, artists totally slays this guy because he didn't turn in artwork. Everyone saw that writer, and yeah. anyone who looked bad came out of that was the writer. Yeah. yeah. Just be nice again. And, and there, thing, be nice. There are there are a lot of writers in comics, and I'm I won't name names, but there are people who their entire career is owed to the fact that they found a young artist who was amazing and it put eyes on their book. Yeah. There are there are amazing artists. Stanley, who, for instance. Stanley. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, uh, but no, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people in comics who, you know, like you can look at certain people and it's like, well, they're a cool writer, but their first project was with an amazing artist and that's why anyone knows who they are. Like your artist is your ambassador for your script, so treat them like royalty and save I up like for that. good that's ones. Good. I'm gonna yeah. steal that, that's good. I also real quick find that new writers are the most precious with art. They give yeah. tons of notes, yeah. usually useless. Yeah. Very nitpicky ones. <laughs> Whereas someone like Hickman, who is a very specific, precise person you think would give lots of notes, I get almost no notes from him ever. D yeah, I, don't give notes. Like, you're in a collaborative process. The artist should be putting out their best work. The colorist should be putting out their best work. The letterer should be putting out their best work. They're doing what they believe in. You're on a team. Like, back up your team. Unless they mess up the story in some way by changing something, what they did is what they wanted to do. And, like, that's what your teammate did, and you go with that. That's my feeling on like creator stuff. Sure. Um, there's a there's a this topic is huge. We could talk about a lot of this for hours. But I'm jumping to questions now. When when if we ask your question, uh, just say your name so we know who you are. Oh okay. Um, my name is Damon Hampton. Hey Damon. That's um at CoolMonkeyD on Instagram. Check <laughs> <laughs> out. So, also DamonDrewThis.com. So, yeah. Um, but my question is this: like, I, I, I have a lot of like anime influence style, and that's probably going to change a little bit as I get older. But I wonder if that or any other style like detrimental to you guys looking or taking art seriously when it's being like judged for portfolio views and stuff. Because last year it was a, a Valiant review. And they called my work, um, what was the word? It was like cute or like adorable, um, charming. And it didn't, it felt like, like it's nice, but like, no one's like, oh man, Superman looks so charming right now. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, don't know how, I don't know how without seeing your art to, to 
to address the charming uh, compliment. <laughs> well, you, you should but, check it out. But, like, <laughs> I have to fucking email. Yeah, I'm already following you. Uh, but, no, the, it, it, when it comes to style, stylized stuff, like, you know, it, when, when manga started influencing comics in, like, the, the mid-90s, guys like Joe Matarara and those guys, um, they were getting cast on projects that uh, needed that look. So you wouldn't have a manga artist necessarily do regular Batman or regular Wolverine, but if there's a story that, that needs that kind of kinetic energy or that dynamism, we would cast that kind of artist on it. I or mean, charm. Or charm, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like Kari, for instance, your style has changed over time, but yeah. you've, you've, you've like, went, you leaned into your style at this point. It was charming at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I know you struggle, because I'm one of those guys who's, who's considered I was told by a bunch of different people that I was like too cartoony or too this, too that. Um, and what I took from that was, I never, I never felt like I changed my art to fit what they wanted. I just always focused on making sure that my, my art was as good as it could be. Like sometimes there's a trap that cartoony artists can fall into where they'll be like, well, I didn't draw that correctly, but I drew it like in my style, so it's okay. And when you're young, it's easy to say that, but sometimes your art just looks messed up. You know what I'm saying? Like, just focus on being the best artist you can be, and eventually the, the projects will kind of come to you. Now, you may not be on like a gritty Batman book or something like that, but I mean, uh, don't try to custom fit what other people think you should be. Yeah. Um, because it'll come across as like not real to you. Just well, your heart wouldn't be in it either. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And why would you even want to do a book that's like a year or two long, not feeling like yourself? Like, lean into what you want. Like, on a totally kind of off topic, but still relevant. I mean, everyone here is familiar with Parks and Rec, a guy who plays um, Nick Offerman, who plays Ron Swanson. There was this great interview where he talked about he was not very successful while his wife was very successful for like 15 years or something. And he talked about how no one ever liked his Ron Swanson character, wherever he brought it and read it. And now Ron Swanson is in pop culture canon. And that's because he kept that character. He was not going to just give up on a character just because people always saw it and were like, this character's never going to be big. And now it's huge. <laughs> like, lean into what I think you're happy about, what you're passionate about. And like he says, be the best artist you can be. Kill it because it's what you want to do. But really kill it. Make it undeniably, irrefutably awesome. If, if you're dope, they will eventually come to you. Exactly. Yeah, and like there used to be what I would say clearer house styles, certainly at Marvel and DC, but that has really fallen away, especially at Marvel in the last couple of years. You got like, I mean, you have your Brian Hitch type guys, but you know, you still use up is Brittany Williams, is that her name? On Hellcat. Yeah. Like the styles run, the, 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 any style you can think of, there's somebody drawing a book like that right now. So as long as you're real, real good at it, and that's the key, then you, you'll, you can get hired for a book. Yeah, do we keep saying words like good or stuff your stuff is going to be okay or whatever but the, the fundamental that all artists have at Marvel is storytelling chops yeah. storytelling chops from background staying consistent anatomy perspective the fundamentals those foundational things that Mike said he, he learned at college all that stuff is is in all of our artists and our colors and our inkers and so no matter what your style is we'll figure out a project at some point that, that matches a style but it's the storytelling that's, that's, that's necessary at Marvel especially Cool. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks. Hey, what's your name? Uh, hi, my name is Brandon. Uh, Brandon. As far as for writing, what do y'all uh, actually? Write? What do y'all look for when uh, when you go through uh, writers' work? As far as like, are y'all looking for their individual voice, or are you looking for if they could uh, use their voice to enhance another story or take it to another direction? Oh, uh, like Matt t touched on this, and it's kind of a catch-22, and it's frustrating. I know it's frustrating, uh, but it's in order to work in comics, you have to make comics. Like Matt said, you can't walk up and hand somebody a five-page short story that you wrote necessarily and get a job in comics. We need to see how you write a comic. And even if the artist isn't great, even if the coloring isn't great, even if it's in black and white, even if it's just pencils, if you've got a, a lettered, written comic that you can share, then an editor can see what, you, what chops you have. Um, no matter the genre, no matter the length, no matter what kind of characters are in it, they just need to see an actual comic. And, and I think you all said this at one point in the panel, is do the work. 
when you finish that first story, work on the next story. Yeah. Figure out what your five-year plan is. Figure out what your year plan is. I think the guy behind you has been in the panel a couple of times before, uh, and every time he shows up, he's got three or four more <laughs> comics that he wrote since last year. And, and so you're gonna have 5,000 pages of, of awful writing before you finally get a comic that looks great. And it's the same for, for art. You're gonna have 5,000 drawings that aren't very good before you get to a page where you're like, whoa, I think I got this now. I realized something clicked in my head. So the best way to show what you can do as a writer is to do the work, make comics. Um, and, and the first step in doing that is finding an artist. And this room is filled with people who put their hands up at the beginning of the panel who want to be artists. So just find someone and start making comics. Also, also I just add, when you make comics, um, make the comic you want to make. Don't make an audition comic. Don't be like, I want to write X-Men, so I'm going to make a book called Y-Man, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be awful. Like, that's just not cool. No one wants to see it. That's no a really good it. idea, though. You should yeah, no, I mean, I, I am going to piss that, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you have a story that you want to tell that, like, wouldn't be a good X-Men story. You have a personal story. Make that and make it as good as you can. Like, there are people who work at Marvel who wrote autobiographical comics. There are people who write... Horror. There are people who write whatever they want, and they don't come to Marvel and necessarily do that thing, but they were good at the thing they did, and you're not going to be good writing a thing that you don't believe in. So don't just be like, yeah, this is my rip off of Wolverine. Like, that's awful. Don't make a rip off of Wolverine. Yeah, and my advice would be to, to finish something. Like, uh, to start out maybe writing shorter comics, at least, so you know that like, you can get those things. Like, it's written, it's done, the script is fine, and you can find an artist who's going to want to work on it, maybe five pages, maybe ten pages. like make it uh, like a reachable goal. Because I know people who want to write comics who have like magnum opuses in their heads. And they're like, oh, it's going to be like a, you know, a four book, like graphic novel. Each book's going to be like 200 pages. And it's just like, you got to like just focus. And like starting like Slice of Life stuff is always really fun for me because I love going online and finding those like web comics where people are just like talking about what happened at like the coffee shop around them or like examining their lives or doing memoir stuff. And that's a, always a great wellspring, I think. But yeah, and that's right, like write the thing that drives you, like write the thing that you want to write. And it's, it's a catch-22, like make comics to be in comics sort of a thing. But the more comics you make, the more scripts that you write, the more things you learn and the better you get. And like that's what you need to be doing. Like anybody else said, writers got to, they have to get better and better. Like that's just what you have to do. Cool. Thank you. Sorry, to go back to the uh, uh, social media thing and doing shorter stories, I always see people have anthologies for submissions and it's a good way to meet artists, get matched up with artists and get a bunch of short stories and things that are finished. Yeah, and even just participating in the sort of general social media comics community is also a very good way to meet artists because yeah. you know you just interact with people and eventually they get to know you and they're more likely to agree to do something for you if they know who you are. Be involved in the community as much as you can. If you want to be a writer or if you want to be an editor, a great way to show people that you can think critically about story is to write reviews. So if you if you aren't working for like a big like comic reviewer, post your own reviews, like blogs, like participate in the discussion, be critical but be professional. And if you don't like something, explain why you don't like it. Don't just be like, oh, that sucked. Like think about it. Think about why you didn't why it didn't click with you. Like what was going on in that, that comic that made you go, that's bad. Because locating that is hard. But being able to like flex those muscles is a great way to become better as a writer too. And you get to see how other people do it and go, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have done it this way instead. Yes, to study books you hate, that's like actually like yeah. really smart. Yeah, like, the stuff you can see the seams in. Yeah. Once you can start seeing the seams, you can start thinking about how to avoid it in your own writing. Like what are the tropes that these people are falling into that maybe aren't as fresh anymore? Or what could I do, like a twist on this trope to make it better? Um, it, yeah, a good book.